Hi there, I'm Dre, the host and founder of the Dragon Network, an online member-based community where health IT professionals can collaborate with each other and share ideas and experiences in a safe and secure place. So every week I take some of the discussions that we're having and I try to share them here for you on this YouTube channel. So today I would actually like to talk about blockchain in healthcare and where we see some blockchain technologies being adopted over the next few years. So most people, when they think of blockchain, initially think of the fintech space. So things like Bitcoin, Ethereum, Dogecoin, that whole world. So blockchain is actually in a whole bunch of industries and there are a ton of application use cases in healthcare that I think we're going to start seeing some movement in over the next several years. Certainly some of them have already started, but it isn't quite as widespread as it is in the fintech space, but it's getting there. Let's talk about what some of those use cases are. Before we jump in, I do want to just give you a very, very high level definition of what I think blockchain is. I am not going to go into detail on the structure of blockchain or how it's all set up because I am certainly not an expert in that field. And there are definitely more YouTube channels that you can check out that would actually provide more comprehensive information for you. But just a high level definition that we're going to work off of for today is that blockchain is an electronic record of transactions where the data is grouped into blocks of information and those blocks are linked together in a sequence using cryptographic hash codes. So one of the big things with blockchain is each block that's added to the chain also contains hash code information from the previous block. So you can be sure that it's flowing in sequence and they're all connected to each other appropriately. The other thing with blockchain that we want to think about is that it is based on a decentralized model where all of the nodes that are participating have a complete copy of this digital ledger or this digital transaction sequence, meaning that it is extremely difficult to actually try to change something on the blockchain because it would need to be changed on every single node within the chain at the same time. And it would also need to connect to the previous block in the same way that the hash code is represented appropriately. So blockchains are thought to be immutable and very, very challenging to sort of break into the data that's on there. One of the big things I think from a healthcare perspective that people tend to get a little bit confused about is blockchain itself isn't something that we're going to likely see all the data live on. So blockchain is not meant to house all of your data assets and that's because it is a distributed ledger. So the complete copy of the chain does again exist on all of the nodes. So you're not going to put your entire multi terabyte EHR database onto blockchain technology. Blockchain is meant to be just that transactional ledger and can have pointers out to your large data stores that you're actually housing your information in. We're going to talk about some of the use cases that we have in the healthcare space. So the first area that I think we can leverage blockchain in is identity management. With identity management, we're talking about patient identity, in particular, some of the demographic information, vital statistics information, things that don't necessarily change on a regular basis. So certainly people may move around at some frequency in their lives, but by and large, when someone moves, they have that address for a little while. One of the things with identity management that blockchain actually can help us with is if we're keeping that type of information connected to a blockchain as opposed to living inside different systems and we're going to reference that information, there is a very, very high possibility that we can change it in one place and then we could reference it everywhere. So think of all the times that you go somewhere and someone needs you to verify your address. Every single place currently that has your address living in it, especially from a healthcare perspective, if you move, that has to be changed in every single system. So having to provide the same information over and over and over again in a healthcare space is one of the most frustrating things that patients experience, myself included. So it would be great if we could just update our address in one place every time we move and it would just automatically go throughout the system. So that's a great one for blockchain. The other one that we're actually seeing some movement on already is with clinical trials. So absolutely the people that are running the trial definitely know that the patient is in there. But one of the things that can be helpful is if that information is on an immutable record 
and it's in a blockchain that can be accessed from a transactional perspective, then other areas within the health organization can easily sort of interact with that once it's in place and determine whether an individual is in a clinical trial or not. So the consent for the clinical trial and the details of the clinical trial, sort of what it is, when it runs, if there's medications attached to it, all that type of information could live transactionally on a blockchain. So similar to the way we're identifying patients with their demographics, we could also identify providers with credentialing and licensing information. So there are licensing bodies outside of the organization, the American College of Physicians and Surgeons, for example. There are different nursing licensure bodies that are out there. So it would be great if the information could be uh, accessed and information could sort of be referenced and flow back and forth to identify who has their license, what their license is, when it expires, what their credentials are good for, do they have admit privileges, all that type of stuff. It isn't something that's changing on a regular basis. It is something that is the same piece of information that is utilized by many, many other systems in many different areas within a healthcare organization and blockchain is a great option for that one as well. We also can use identity management from a supplier perspective, identifying supplier information, who the vendors are, what the contact information is, where they're physically located, what products they sell, that type of stuff. So next up, let's talk about medical records. Just like you don't like updating your address a million different times in a million different places within the health system itself, it is also very unlikely that your medical history is going to change. So one of the other things that gets asked on a very frequent basis is surgical history, for example. And I know myself had some surgeries as a child and absolutely don't remember what year they were in and find it very difficult to, you know, pull up the name of the actual surgery off the top of my head. So if that's living in an immutable record that somehow health organizations or providers can access and sort of look up in a reliable, sort of unchanging, secure way, that would be absolutely very, very helpful. Your encounter and visit information. So one of the first things that happens when a patient portal is actually set up is patients are given access to their visit history, which tells them every time they interacted with that particular health system. Well, if you look at blockchain and if we can figure out how to get things onto the blockchain so that we have a network that can actually access it and sort of read or reference or securely um, obtain data from there, then we can actually keep an entire record of your visit history and in your, your encounter data on there. Not necessarily from just one organization, but from multiple organizations. So wouldn't it be great if you had all of your specialist data, your emergency department visits, and all of the visits from your primary care physician all in one place? Right now, I know for me, they're in three different portals, which is not great. Medication lists. So if you are on some long-standing medications or if you're taking uh, particular vitamins that you take on a regular basis, sort of maintaining that type of stuff in a blockchain, again, so that it's easy to access, is another potential use of the technology. Haven't quite seen too much in this space yet, but definitely one that I'm keeping an eye on because I think it might be helpful, especially for older patients if there's a reliable, immutable source where that information can live and consistently be referenced by anyone, I think it will be great. And finally, from a records perspective, the Internet of Things and remote monitoring, blockchain seems very enticing, mostly because of its security and privacy and its ability to be accessed and have data entered from anywhere. Of course, depending on how everything is set up and how it's structured, it's going to have a huge sort of impact on this one. But as we start to see more IoT devices, enter into the healthcare space and we start to see more remote home monitoring sort of happen in that way. Looking at how to connect and exchange that data is becoming very important. So pharmaceuticals and medical devices. So I didn't realize until I started looking into the use of blockchain in the pharmaceutical space what a huge issue counterfeit medications are. So I don't know why I hadn't thought of that. Maybe just living between Canada and the US it didn't come up. Um, as much sort of in what I was looking at. So as we move medications sort of around the world, there's a very strong desire to make sure that the medication is authentic and that all the ingredient components are exactly what they're supposed to be. So blockchain can help with that, especially when it's being passed between different organizations or different uh, pharma companies. So the other thing with pharmaceuticals and medical devices is 
Some of them require cold chain transport, which means that they need to be transported from point A, the supplier point, to point B, the hospital delivery endpoint, or the clinic endpoint, without too much fluctuation in their temperature. So if we look at COVID vaccines, for example, right now, we know that some of them require deep cold storage in order for them to be transported. You don't want them to melt along the way. And you want to be able to track what that temperature is as you go through the different steps. Blockchain can assist with that and it can provide the complete record in a very, very secure format. So there's a number of companies in the pharmaceutical space that have already set up some of their blockchain technologies to help with this and to look at what those uh, transport and place of origin, place of manufacture, authenticity pieces look like. So along a similar line, supply chain in general, we can sort of take pieces that we've talked about in the other use case areas for supply chain and put them together. So certainly keeping track of things from their place of origin or manufacture to their point of delivery is something that blockchain can do in the general supply area. There is also the identification of your suppliers sort of who, they're, who the vendors are, whether they're certified or not, where their licensing exists to operate in certain areas, depending, of course, on what it is that they're selling. Certificates that may be associated with some of the supplies that you're obtaining. Blockchains that have smart contracts embedded can also assist in the supply chain world when it comes to some of the purchase order and accounts payable. So there are group purchasing organizations that are leveraged by hospitals on a fairly frequent basis where the hospital or provider group or clinic entity will make a purchase from a, a group purchasing uh, organization and that organization is then going to sort of call out to, to the supplier to have something delivered and it looks similar to sort of a triangle so you go to the gpo the gpo goes to the supplier the supplier delivers to you and payment sort of in that pathway can get a little confusing and it currently takes quite a bit of time and quite a bit of human intervention. So one of the things that blockchain can help with that is if smart contracts are in place, they look to take away the middleman and to actually have the technologies just take care of that for you. So some of those automation processes with accounts payable and with the delivery tracking and things like that would be very helpful. Last but certainly not least, I wanna talk about health insurance. So the topic that everyone loves to talk about Health insurance can also benefit from blockchain. You are definitely seeing this. There's a lot of private sector players in the space, so they are not afraid of innovation and are actually looking for anything to make things more efficient, which is a good thing, but access to records. So again, if we're looking at having information that you know speaks to your encounter histories, speaks to some of your history, that type of stuff, blockchain supported APIs that of course are given very strict permission, timeframe parameters, and are secure. Consent definitely needs to be involved. But things like that, if they're living on a blockchain, if they can access them easily, if it's an immutable record, then we may have the ability to increase our prior authorizations and have that work a little better. We can also look to decrease the turnaround for payments. So if they have the ability within, again, a given period of time with consent, with privacy and security, but if they can check to corroborate the claim that's there, there can perhaps be a quicker turnaround on payments because you can reduce some of those middlemen there as well. Similar to what we just mentioned in the supply chain space, anything that can be um, sort of set up with smart contracts that is a repeatable process that the computer can help with, blockchain is great for those use cases. So I realized that was quite a few use cases that I went over very quickly and we certainly do deep dives on a bunch of them without any troubles, but for now I just wanted to sort of get those out there and have them in your mind so you can start thinking how would this actually intersect with the healthcare space? Is there going to be movement in this area in the next several years? Absolutely. The individuals who are focusing on blockchain technology have been incredibly excited about it for years. They've been trying to tell us in the healthcare space how great it's going to be, how it's going to change our lives, and we have been a little bit apprehensive, probably because it's very confusing. It's kind of like when the internet was first created, no one really understood it. And I think now, as time has gone by a little, and we're starting to see that blockchain is being utilized in other industries, we're starting to sort of understand it a little bit more, we're gonna start to see some of these use cases actually start to leave their pilot phases 
and just start to take off and sort of really see how this is going to work. So I'm going to keep an eye on blockchain. I find it incredibly fascinating. Like I said at the beginning, I am trying to learn more about it. I'm taking some online courses just to see if I can sort of improve my knowledge. And as I learn more and as I get more comfortable in the space or as we see more examples, I will bring them back here to you. So I hope you have a great day. I'm going to put some links actually in the um, description of some industry examples. So I'll link to some websites so you can see who some of the players are that are currently working in the space and already leveraging blockchain technology. But I hope that that was helpful for you and I will see you again next week.